Hi everyone. I want to take a few minutes to demonstrate configuring the Big IP to support Kerberos authentication within user logons. There are actually two different types of ways you can configure the Big IP to support Kerberos. Uh, Server-side Kerberos constrained delegation and client-side authentication, which we're going to demonstrate here. This is for users that may already reside on your domain and you don't want to present them with additional logon prompts, uh, but more or less a seamless method of accessing the website. So with that, um, let's go ahead and get started. But before we actually get to configuring the Big IP, let's take a look at Active Directory. And you'll notice I already have a, an account created. And it's a normal user account, no additional privilege created. And we're going to go ahead and, and use a command called ktpass to create what we're going to call a ktap file. This ktap file is going to allow the Big IP to decrypt any Kerberos tickets presented to it to actually provide the authorization uh, method of allowing a user to access the particular web resource. So here you'll notice in our ktpass command, we have a principle of HTTP SP site request.com. That is going to be our service principle name that we're going to define for the user. Uh, we're going to map it to demo at sitequest.com. That's the user account we just uh, reviewed in Active Directory. We're going to use the crypto of RC4. And this is configurable, so you can use AES and other types of encryption for uh, for Kerberos purposes. P-type, uh, care b5 underscore nt underscore principal. Dash pass, that is, we're defining a password for the, for the user itself. And out, we're simply uh, going to be creating a key tab in this location. So with that, let's go ahead and run this command. And you'll notice that it was successful. So let's go to our go ahead and go to our big IP now. And currently we have a single virtual server that's assigned a single uh, single pool, and that pool is represented by a single demo, demo website. So within our virtual server right now, we have no access policy assigned. Nothing assigned, nothing created at this point. So before we create the access policy, let's go ahead and create our AAA, our Kerberos AAA server. And we can go ahead and provide any name here. Our auth realm will be the domain name service name I'm going to use HTTP and we're going to browse for the key tap file we just created in a previous step and select finished and you'll notice here we have our principal defined in, that we define in KT pass as well as the encryption type that we define in KT pass uh, you'll notice the KVNO here this is beneficial in troubleshooting purposes if you need to know if the principal change at all this KVNO will actually increment when changes are made to the principal themselves. So now let's go ahead and create our access profile. Profile type will select all. Go ahead and define a language. Finished. We're going to edit the access profile by selecting plus, selecting the HTTP 401 response, and HTTP auth level, we're going to select negotiate. We're going to leave the other fields for basic auth empty. There are other authentication methods, as you'll notice in the VPE, different branches of different authentication methods that we can provide. But for this, we're going to focus on Kerberos authentication only. So we'll go ahead and click save. Um, following the negotiate branch, we're going to select authentication and Kerberos auth, add item. And we're going to go ahead and select the AAA server we created previously. From the drop down, select enabled for request based auth and select save. And we're going to go ahead and change the successful branch to allow. And we're going to go ahead and apply that policy. 
And now we're gonna go back to our virtual server and we're actually gonna go ahead and apply the access policy to the virtual server itself. So before we actually get started uh, in testing, let's go ahead and we're gonna enable debug logging. Um, I certainly recommend this for the initial testing, but of course disable it for future once this actually goes live. But we're gonna actually going to go to Access Overview Event Log Settings, and I already have a I already have a login profile that's configured for um, debug purposes. So we're simply going to go ahead and assign the access policy we just created to that login profile. So now that we've done that and we've assigned the access policy to our virtual server, we're going to navigate to our client. And we're going to go ahead and launch our browser. We're going to review real quick our local internet zone settings. So a lot of the times uh, within your local domain, the only things that are allowed to authenticate using Kerberos or Windows authentication, Windows integrated authentication, are sites in your local internet zone. So you notice here I've already defined HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash sp.siterequest.com, which is the website we'll be browsing to here in a second. And if you want to look at the custom level which authentications methods are allowed, you'll notice here uh, this is configurable, so user authentication logon. I'm using an automatic logon only in internet zone. So this is why I defined sp.siterequest.com in that internet zone. So now let's go ahead and browse to sp.siterequest.com. And we're granted access. So now let's go ahead and take a look at let's actually take a look at any Kerberos cash Kerberos tickets you notice we do have a cash Kerberos ticket for the HTTP site sp.siterequest.com so now let's go back to the big IP and let's take a look at what that logs actually generated for my session We'll notice that this session was just created at 2.30, 14, 14.30, and we're now at 14.31, so let's go ahead and select the session. And if we had not enabled debug logging, you would not have been presented a lot of this information. If this would have failed, I certainly would recommend reviewing any errors, tailing the APM log uh, using the command line. And also enable debug logging for RBA, the uh, RBA process, which can also be found in the Kerberos troubleshooting guide for uh, Kerberos end user logon. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we just want to validate this was successful. And we're presented here with session policy result policy path. So we see that. We felt, uh, followed the fallback branch, went to HTTP 401 response, and our Kerberos authentication was successful, and we were allowed access to the resource assigned to that virtual server. So again, this was a quick, very brief demonstration of configuring Kerberos authentication with end user logon, but I hope it was beneficial to somebody out there. Until next time.